A number of years ago at a software conference, one of the evening activities was an outing to a hands-on science museum. While there, I noticed and picked up this binary clock. It uses something called BCD encoding, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to make my own version of this as a project. Technically, it could be done with some simple logic circuits and a timer, but this would involve more hardware design and wiring than I wanted to be involved with, and so I'm gonna go the easy route and use an Arduino. This is gonna be done in four parts. Part one today is the basic requirements and design. Then as I'm waiting for the parts to come in, I'll go over for the software design and how to actually do some testing without having a complete circuit finished. The third video, I'll assemble all the circuits and get it running. And then the fourth video will be creating an enclosure for it. Welcome to the House of Hacks. If we're just meeting, I'm Harley and I make stuff out of variety of materials. For example, in this project, we're doing design discussions and software and electronics and mixed media for the enclosure. If making things out of a variety of materials in the workshop is something that's your thing, consider subscribing and you won't miss future episodes. BCD is an acronym for Binary Coded Decimal, and this was an encoding system that IBM came up with nearly 100 years ago in the 1920s for use in their mechanical devices. As early computers came on the scene, they took this basic coding that they used and expanded upon it to use in the computers. It was called EPSIDIC at the time, and it was actually used until relatively recently. Interestingly, early in my career, I had to write an ASCII to EPSIDIC conversion routine for use by our business partners. Before going to the whiteboard, a couple notes. First, the code and schematic for this project is available for free download off of GitHub. And second, a commercial version of this clock, kind of like the one that I picked up at the conference, as well as all the materials I'm using in the project, are available on Amazon. I'll leave links for everything down in the description below. In BCD, each column represents a decimal digit, coded in binary. The first column is the tens digit for the hours. The second is the units column for the hours. Next, we have the hours and units digits for the minutes and the hours and units digits for the seconds. In decimal, we need four bits to cover all the digits zero through nine in binary. So all the units columns on the LEDs have four LEDs. Because on a clock, none of the tens digits go all the way to nine, we don't need a full four bits for each of the tens columns. Hours, for example, only go to two, so we only need two bits for a 24-hour clock. The minutes and the seconds only go to five, and so we only need three bits for those. So to make this, what are our requirements? For the LEDs, we have three groups of four and two groups of three for a total of 18, and another two for a total of 20 LEDs that we need to just control. Second, we need a way of keeping track of the time, and third, we need a way to set the time. I'll talk about all these requirements in detail, but first, I'm excited to announce that I'm working on some Arduino training materials. I have an Arduino reference poster available now, and I'm working on a book for people new to digital electronics and programming the Arduino. A digital version of the poster is available by just signing up to the House of Hacks mailing list, where I'll keep you updated on things happening here. I won't bombard your email with a bunch of stuff, just occasional updates when products are released, and an occasional news item that I think you might find interesting related to making things. If you're interested in this, there's a link in the description below. Now back to the design. Looking at controlling the LEDs, my first inclination was to think about this as a single string of 20 bits, where each digit in each group was put in line with the rest of the bits. The common way of working with large numbers of LEDs is to use a 595 based shift register. This only requires three pins on the Arduino, but provides a number of digital outputs. This is so commonly used that there's a shift out command built into the Arduino ecosystem. 595 chips typically only work with eight bits, although there are variants that have more bits, but they can be daisy chained together, so you can have an almost arbitrary number of digital outputs, all controlled by only three pins. Since there's 20 bits needed, and each 595 provides eight bits, I thought about using three shift registers daisy-chained together. This would give eight times three, or 24 bits. 
The first 20 bits would be used, and the last 4 bits could be ignored. I coded up a prototype sketch using this idea, but it ended up being more messy than I really liked. All the code was one big blob with a bunch of dependencies spread throughout the whole thing. Some of that mess could be cleaned up with some refactoring, but it would still be more messy than I would really like. Upon reflection, I realized each group of two numbers only needs at most 7 bits, and I have three groups. For the purposes of this project, I could still use the three 595s, but instead of daisy chaining them together, I could connect each one to the Arduino directly. This would help make the code much cleaner. Each 595 needs three pins, so that'd be a total of nine pins for the LEDs instead of three. Let's look at the rest of the requirements and see if there are enough pins. To track time, the most reliable would be to use a clock module. A real-time clock module, also called an RTC, is designed to interface with microcontrollers and has its own battery backup. There are a number of different models. I selected to use the DS1307 because they can be had inexpensively and communicate with the Arduino using only three pins over the I2C bus. It would also be possible to use the Arduino itself to track the time, although I'm not sure how accurate that would be. It would provide a software-only solution, though. Finally, we need a way to set the time. The commercial unit I have uses two buttons. One increases the hour each time it's pressed. The other increases the minute each time it's pressed. And if they're both pressed at the same time, the seconds are increased. This could work, but I don't have any good buttons that would be appropriate for mounting in an enclosure. And in my spare parts bin, I have a rotary encoder. Rotary encoders come in different styles. This particular one allows the user to spin it in either direction without any limits. It can also be pressed to indicate an event. The microcontroller can detect which direction it's turned and take appropriate action. I think this would be easier to make accessible to the user in the enclosure, so I'm going to use it. It uses two pins to the Arduino to communicate the rotary action, and one pin to communicate being pressed. So all in all, I'm looking at using nine pins for the three 595s, three pins for the clock, and three pins for the rotary encoder, a total of 15 pins. Since I want to keep this pretty compact, I'm going to select the Arduino Micro. It's only about two inches long and about three quarters of an inch wide, and designed to go in breadboards and pre-made circuit boards with standard hole spacing. And it has 18 digital I.O. pins, three more than the 15 that we need. I think it should work well. So I'll go order the parts, and while waiting for them, I'll show you the software in this video. And if that video hasn't been released yet, I'll see you in this other video where I do an Arduino project simulating wind to make wind chimes sound indoors. After, after watching that, go make something. Perfection isn't required, fun is.